what's going on guys back out here at this uh, compressor with the discharge line that had uh, crack damage whatever you want to call it I'm gonna go ahead and uh, repair that try to get this thing back up and running so basically what I've got now is uh, got my nitrogen over here basically just uh, put it on test blew a bunch of nitrogen inside of it you can hear it I got one of my fittings loose over here so basically what I'm just trying to do is just displace as much air in the system as possible also kind of help boil off any refrigerant uh, that may still be down in the sump of the compressor or uh, in the accumulator just try to get all that off as much as possible uh, before I unsweat this fitting but basically what I'm gonna attempt to do I think it's gonna be the the best way for me so I'm gonna unsweat this fitting I'm gonna pull this pipe over to the side and I'm gonna cut it somewhere in here I have another piece of pipe over here so I'm just gonna swage that sweat that back down into there and then have one swage solder joint I could try to bird turd over that but it in the picture that I had in my other video if you zoom in really closely it appears that there's a, a like a hairline fracture going up the side of that pipe and I don't want to do this twice um, or have it only last a year or something like that so uh, when in doubt cut it out so basically that's what I'm gonna do so that's the game plan at least also while I'm here I'm gonna go ahead while I let this nitrogen purge through the system I'm going to uh, clean up all this debris in the bottom especially since I'll be brazing in here and things like that so just clean that up while I run a little bit of nitro through her and uh, yeah we'll go ahead and get started Alright guys, we've been sitting for about 10 minutes. Nitrogen pressure is pretty much equalized. You can see there's about a 1 PSI differential between the two, but not a big deal. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is start our timed pressure test. You're going to hit mode. It's going to bring you to this screen. And all you're going to do is hit play. And it's going to monitor our pressures, our pressure drop, tell us our pressure drop or pressure rise over a period of time. And like I said, usually I let it sit for about 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, somewhere in that ballpark. So we'll go ahead and let that ride. And uh, I'm going to clean up some of this mess out here. 
and I'll be back in about 20 or 30 minutes and we'll see how we're doing. All right, hopefully you guys can hear me. Got some landscapers doing some work out here now, but you can see I'm 31 minutes in. No pressure drop, 357 PSI still. So we are definitely good. So I'm gonna blow this nitrogen off of this unit, get the uh, evacuation rig set up, and we'll go ahead and uh, pull her on down. All right, guys. She's slowly pulling on down. 1200. We're gonna do one more, uh, one more break with nitrogen. Got my nitrogen sitting here. We'll break it one more time with nitrogen. That should get us down, uh, down close to where we need to be. But this system's been open for several days, so any moisture or anything that's uh, that's in the system's got to gonna take a while to get out. So ideally. I would have uh, two hose set up instead of a single hose set up, but I'm letting another tech borrow a hose, so I just got the single single set up here. Which basically, I got both my valve core tools on here. These are king valves, so they don't have valve stems in them. Um, I'm just using them to be able to isolate, and uh, number one, when I isolate to do my decay test, I'll be able to just close this ball valve right here. And also, when I go to introduce refrigerant into the system, um, I'll be able to isolate it away from my evacuation hose and if I wanted to isolate it away from from my micron gauge as well but this particular gauge is is uh, good for positive pressure up to I believe 500 psi so not really any any worry about that but um yeah that's where we're at right now so. all right got everything up and running everything fired up just fine Right here, we're looking for 15 degrees of subcooling. Got the factory charge weighed in, plus a little bit extra for the line set. It's been running for about 20 minutes now. And we're running about six degrees of superheat and 16 and a half degrees of subcool. So we're at 15, or we're calling for 15 rather, plus or minus three for 410A. So we are well within that. Pressures look pretty good. Evaporator sitting at about 48 degrees. So yeah, all I'm doing now is just letting everything run until uh, I get some water to come out of this drain line, which I had to dig up. So I'm gonna let her run until she drains, and uh, yeah, call it good. So I'm gonna pack up all my mess out here and head on to the next one. So sorry I couldn't get more more uh, information at the end of this but my phone battery is running real low so got to do what I got to do so hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching like comment subscribe and we'll see you on the next one